Hello and welcome to another solo episode of the Everyday Legends podcast. Today I'm going to speak to you briefly on a fucking giant topic and that is shame. I'm going to start with a powerful quote from an elder, a mentor, an expert in this work of understanding ourselves, of stepping into sovereignty and being you know the best human we can and integrating all of our shit in our past and accessing what's available to us and yeah being a bloody sovereign useful human and that is a man called Francis Weller I've spoken about him plenty in the past uh, and I will today as well starting with a quote of his which he says shame will see us live with the aim of getting from birth to death without ever being seen a tombstone that says safe at last so I'm going, to, I'm going to roll through that again. Shame will see us live with the aim of never being seen. A tombstone that says, ah, oh, safe and last. So let's break that down for a moment. The challenge for so many of us is that we are terrified of fully being seen. Those parts of us that we deem as inferior, that we judge, that we reject, that we experience shame around, that we fear rejection and judgment for. But as humans, we want to belong. We want to be seen. We want to be recognized. We want to feel important. We want to feel useful. We want to feel valued. We want to feel like we belong. But this comes head to head at odds with my fears and insecurities. So what I'll do is I'll create a version of myself, masked, armored up, that I'll venture out into the world. It feels like it will be approvable, right? That it feels like we'll get respect and we'll belong. Whilst I shame parts of myself or fear shame from the world judgment rejection etc the thing about that is that version of me can never truly be seen because i'm hiding and so therefore that version can never truly belong or feel land within my bones that i belong that i'm enough that i'm worthy of love and belonging because i'm keeping some of me in the shadows and that shame will see us live with the aim of never truly being seen Therefore, I can't be judged. I can't be rejected. But any belonging, approval, validation, love that I gain isn't fully for me because I'm keeping some of me in the dark. So it never fully lands, right? And so we might as well be aiming for a quick life tombstone, ah, safe at last. Grim, right? But also from Francis on the same subject, that that perhaps... It, that might perhaps expand our, our eyes, our vision on the importance of looking at shame. He says, what we shame, we treat as worthless. And what's worthless, we avoid and leave alone. I'll say that again. What we shame, we treat as worthless. And what's worthless, we avoid, we leave alone. So reading that at a surface level could kind of easily point to one way of thinking perhaps. And that is, great. <laughs> I don't want to look at that shit. It's worthless. I, 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 I'll bloody leave it alone then. But if you are treating part of you as worthless, rejecting part of you, then you are treating you as worthless. You are rejecting yourself. What we shame, we risk putting into a dark corner of our psyche and hoping that it will leave us alone. Right? What we train, what we shame, we treat as worthless. And what we treat as worthless, we leave alone. And as soon as we put ourselves into that bucket, that is what we're doing with ourselves. We do not appreciate, honor who we are. And so if we put that in a dark corner of our psyche, hoping it will leave us alone. But in doing so, we actually give it the power to run our lives from the shadows and this kind of cycle of self-deception because we do need to deceive ourselves, to, to, to deny, be in denial. And, and so I want you to think about this idea. Those things of us that are dark, that we hide in the shadows, it can feel confronting to face, right? And Brene Brown says with shame, if we were to put shame in a Petri dish, in order for it to grow, it needs silence, secrecy, and judgment. And that's what we tend to do, right? I'm going to put it away in a dark corner, closet in the house, silence, secrecy, and judgment. And therefore, I'm judging it. That's the very nature of it. And I'm fearing judgment for the world as well. But I'm fearing judgment, really judgment and how I judge myself. But we do that. We put it in a dark, scary corner. 
And so if you think about a, a, a scary clown that is kind of laughing maniacally, uh, in the darkness, it holds power. There's an edge. There, there, there's, a, there's a power there. It's scary, right? The, the best is to shut the door and not visit, right? And just leave that there in the darkness. <laughs> but unless you want to close off access to part of your house, part of you right and let that laughter kind of creep in through every aspect of your home yourself right that's what we risk doing when we shame those things and put them in the corner and treat them as worthless they infiltrate the nights the night comes the lights go out and we hear this laughter this charge whereas if we actually enter into that room in our home in ourselves and we turn on the light and we can see oh instantly when i shine a light on it it carries less charge. Oh, it's just some fucking clown. It's just some fucking clown in the corner. It had so much charge, so much power in the darkness. I flick on the light. Now, it can still look terrifying as fuck, but there's a depth taken away from that when the light comes on. And what I'll probably see is, this is some dude with some paint on that is lonely. The parts of me that have felt lonely, that have felt rejected, that actually need to be welcomed in that actually need warmth and acceptance and when i do that i can step into my wholeness not become whole because we always are but i can accept myself and my wholeness what i shame i treat is worthless and what is worthless i leave alone and so if i'm shaming myself and treating myself as worthless and so when i let that into the light i can bring it into acceptance i can bring that into wholeness i can welcome all of me in francis weller also talks about this idea of being a place of welcome we often tend to be we often seem to be seeking belonging at some point we have to be a place of welcome and there's depth to that and we explore that heavily in my work in the everyday legends academy but one of the simple pieces for me in that is this that means it invites me to welcome all of me Instead of going out into the world trying to take belonging, trying to seek approval, money, status, these things that help me feel like I belong, I get to actually believe that I belong and then go out into the world like that. I welcome all of me. I accept all of me. And then I can be a more effective, more useful human because I'm not trying to take and lean on the world around me for a sense of belonging. Flick the light on, approach the clown, approach the shame and welcome all of you. Because if I shame it, it wins. I will always be trying to hide it, trying to run from it. I will treat it and me as worthless. And if I try to live a life, avoid a life of shame, or shame at all, possibly being judged by others, then I will be racing to a tombstone that says safe at last. And my question to you is, don't you want more than that? Right? So if it, to grow, shame needs silence, secrecy, and judgment, then the antidotes to that might be silence and secrecy. Silence and secrecy. So out of the secret, out of the dark, and discussion. Talk about it. Bring it into the year. And let's call the opposite of judgment empathy, compassion for oneself, and an empathetic environment. It is entirely doable. The things that we hold shame around can hold great charge, and they will continue to the more we feed it silence, secrecy, and judgment. So... If we want to change this, what does this require of us? Well, bringing shame out of the shadows into a safe, co compassionate, empathetic container to explore, to challenge, and to give some love, to honor, and then acceptance. And until we own our shame, we will treat ourselves as worthless. The shame will own us. Living life, hiding away, waiting for that tombstone, safe at last. And I know that is grim. But it also brings to mind an opportunity to do something about it. That is my invitation. That is my challenge to you gentlemen today. What are you going to do about this? We all hold shame somewhere. Sometimes it requires a little bit of looking, a little bit of uh, uh, curious exploration, a bit of challenge, a bit of depth, a bit of nuance, different eyes and ears. But where we hold that, we will treat it as worthless and it will run our lives from the shadows. We won't touch it, but it will be all over us. If you need support with this, reach out. If this is triggered or tapped or connected to something in you, let us know. Reach out. Do something with this. Start the conversation. You don't need to have all the answers to this, all the actions to solve it immediately, but starting with something. 
what do you want on your tombstone? Because if that has been your path until now, you get to change that. So let's change it. All right, that's been our show today. Make sure you pass this on to someone who you think could benefit from it. Remember how this show grows is by you, literally you, not some next person, not some other person, you sharing this with at least one person, one guy that you think could benefit from this, that could enjoy it, that might feel challenged by it, but will ultimately get something from this and enrich and empower his own life. All right, until next time.